Okay, so Okay, so we're cooking today. I can't be in the bathtub because of reasons. So we're gonna cook. And what we're cooking is a, let's see if I can remember, a keto cheeseburger casserole. And I'm so excited. So what we're gonna do first and foremost is wash our, actually, no, first we're gonna put up our hair because our hair is long. So we flip it, twist, we're going to put it up in a bun. Like I said, you don't want hair in the food. Nobody wants hair in the food. So that's what we're going to do. And then we're going to walk over here and we're going to wash our hands. Gotta use the hot water and cool on and just wash them liquid. Hopefully, you can still hear me. Come over there. Now we're gonna wash, 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 I'm gonna dry our hands off really good. And it's so cute, it's got a little turkey on it. It's adorable. Hello, everybody. Okay, so to go along with this keto cheeseburger casserole, we're gonna have mashed cauliflower and steamed vegetables. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this on to a medium to low heat. I put it on about four and a new bowl. We're gonna take this big bowl because I used the other big bowl yesterday. Was it yesterday? I think it was yesterday. I can't remember if it was yesterday. And we're gonna take our meat. We're gonna set it in the bowl. I don't know why I'm saying everything I do. I mean, y'all can obviously see me. Take meat out of the bag and give it a can. Okay. Away. Now see, I'm making a big one because the leftovers are like super, super good. And I like to make enough to have for the next few days. Come on. There we go. Thank you. Okay, and always after handling raw meat, always wash your hands again, because if not, your hands get greasy and it's nasty. I'm gonna come back over here. Rewash our hands. I apologize for not being able to get into the bathtub. But I will be able to do so next week. So I was thinking the weeks that I cannot go live in the bathtub, I will cook for you guys. So we're gonna we're gonna leave that cooking. Move that around. And yeah, we're gonna have mashed cauliflower, which I have. I'm using tanamur and antel, I think that's how you say it, but I, I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to use this for the steamed vegetables or for the mashed cauliflower, but we will get to that. And then I've got my, I'm using beefsteak tomatoes because they're really easy to cut and they're really good. I mean, I personally don't like tomatoes. Yes, hot scalding water to wash off germs. Germs do not like the heat. 
But anyways, I'm using beefsteak tomatoes because I like them. But I mean, like, I don't like, like, like tomatoes, if that makes any sense. Like, I'll eat them in something, but I won't eat a tomato by itself. I think it's gross. And then I'm using minced garlic. I'm lazy, so I'm not really going to be chopping anything up today besides the tomatoes and the cauliflower. And do, 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 do. And I got my onions. Got my onions, onions. Oh yeah, I'm gonna be chopping up the onions too. And we're just gonna put our onions right in there. That's where all the onions go, all the time. And make sure if you get the jarred minced garlic, when you are done using it, put it in the ice box. And for those of you who call it a fridge, we call it an ice box in the cell. And fun fact, the reason why it is called an ice box is because back in the olden days, um, the way they kept their food cold was they had a box on top of the, you know, other part and they put a block of ice in it. Ice box. I'll be right back. I'm going to go get some better lighting. Is that better? That is that's so much better. So much better. Okay, so. You're gonna use, I have so many utensils here. We're gonna use this. I don't buy many utensils, but this is what we're gonna use. We're just gonna scrape off I mean, some of the meat's still frozen, which is okay. It's fine. It's great. But we're going to scrape off some of this thawed off meat. And while this is happening, how about you guys tell me about your day? I apologize that I missed yesterday's live. But we ended up having to... Stay at work super, super late. Um, what had happened was we had to go to, where was it? Well, first we had to go to Allsup's, which for those of you who live in Texas and New Mexico, is one of the best little convenience stores that you can find. But we had to go there, pump them out, and let me tell you, I'm not saying any names. There's a plumbing company that we use a lot. And they, one of their best people left. It was a really good plumber. But he left and they hired some other guy. I don't know his name. I don't care to know his name, honestly. But, I need And don't worry, everything's clean, so. Anyways, this new guy, we wait like 30 minutes for this guy to show up. We have already pumped it out and everything. But... We waited 30 minutes for this guy to show up. And when he got there, he sat in his truck for five minutes on his phone. Just straight up on his phone. I was upset. I was cold. I was, I was ready to leave. And I had to go inside, get them to sign everything. And I had to wait like another 30 minutes just to get the PO number. So that was adding pretty much fuel to the fire. And the guy didn't, he, he didn't even know what he was doing. Didn't even know what he was doing. He had to help him and show him what he was doing. He's not even a plumber. But anyways, so we were already late to the hospital by that time. That's who we were pumping out. We were pumping out uh, the hospital, their grease trap. And so by that time, we were already late. And we had went to work early because we were supposed to go over there. And um, well, we get done pumping out the hospital. And they have like these little, well, I can't say little, like 50 pound drums. Filled with uh, like the cooking oil. And we have it connected to one of the long, thick green hoses. 
and these small black and green hose. And well, I guess we had it pulled a little bit too tight because when I opened that valve, the hose busted and I got covered in grease. It was not fun. I was upset. I, I just wanted to go home and not even finish out the day. But, however, knowing how, what a cheap wad my boss is, I, I know that if I would have went home, I wouldn't have gotten paid for the rest of the day. So I, unfortunately, had to deal with grease in my eye, in my hair, and in my ear. And it was not fun. I had a super bad day yesterday. Uh, today was a little bit better. Uh, we went to the nursing home to pump out their grease trap. And everything was fine. And we went to the jailhouse, pumped them out. They were fine. We went to the daycare, pumped them out. They were fine. But it was cold today. It was freezing. I don't do cold very well. I really don't. I cannot stand the cold. And on our way to Abilene to dump all the grease, we had ice. Ice was completely frozen. I mean, ice is usually frozen, but ice was all over the front of the truck. It sucked. It was horrible. But tell me how y'all's day has been. And tell me, tell me how your weekend was. Tell me how your yesterday was. Tell me how you think your tomorrow's going to be. Hopefully tomorrow's going to be okay. Um, it's supposed to be colder tomorrow. We have a... One minute. I'm going to go look. I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. I'm going to put my phone on the charger when I got home. But I am going to look up the weather for tomorrow. Okay, so currently right now it is 43 degrees. And earlier the high was supposed to be like 53, but now it has dropped to 45. Tomorrow it's going to be 49 with a 37% chance of rain. Thursday is going to be 39 with 70% chance of freezing rain. Um, oh, my God. Friday is going to be 44. Saturday is going to be 33 with a 33% chance of snow. And then Sunday, 31. And then Monday is going to be 26 with a 39% chance of snow. I told my boss I'm going to quit and come back Tuesday. Okay, so our meat is slowly browning, but it's browning. And once we get this browning, I'm going to wash this bowl. And that is what we're going to put our liquid mixture in. Because our keto cheeseburger casserole, our, our keto cheeseburger casserole has to have whipping cream, cheese, tomato, and spices, which I've ignored the top part. But I have currently organized my spice cabinet, and I'm so happy. It might take a little bit for the meat to brown, because like I said, some of it was still frozen. Because we only got home like 30 minutes ago. Oh, you like my little snowman right here? You like him? Isn't he cute? I mean, I know it's not Christmas, but I use that to put my uh, spatula in. Who here has watched um, Saved by the Bell? Who watched it as a kid in the 90s? I watched it 
excuse me. I watched an episode of Saved by the Bell and an episode of Boy Meets World every day before school. Love it. Those are my shows. Wasn't really a fan of Zach Morris, though. He was he, he, he was not a very nice student, let's just say that. But, however, I was on Facebook the other day, and I saw that Dustin Diamond died. Just straight up died. And I was like, nah, it's got to be a hoax. There's no way. And I looked it up, and he straight up died. And honestly, knowing that, you know, I can't really say knowing Dustin Diamond, but knowing what I heard being said about him in, like, social media and stuff, I, I thought he died of a drug overdose. No, turns out the guy had, like, stage four cancer, which is, you know, sad. Don't get me wrong. It's very sad. But that's, like, everybody from my childhood is dying. And it is so sad. And then, you know, like I said, I watched an episode of Saved by the Bell and Boy Meets World every day before school. And Boy Meets World was one of my favorite shows. Honestly, one of my biggest crushes on there was uh, Sean and Eric. Which I'm pretty sure a lot of, you know, girls back in the day had crushes on them. But, yeah, they, ooh, Lord, they were pretty. And then, honestly, I'm not going to lie, I got really excited when I heard they were going to come out with a spinoff, uh, Girl Meets World. So, I watched some of it, didn't really get into it, because, you know, I was an adult when they came out with it. But I guess it wasn't really my thing. I mean, they didn't, I mean, yeah, they dealt with, I guess, real life situations, but it wasn't like Boy Meets World, you know what I mean? So... Anyways, I, I hear that Ryder Strong, the guy that um, played Sean, I heard he hasn't done much acting since. And let me tell you, he is not as cute as he used to be. Neither is Freddie Hi Not Freddie Highmore. Freddie Highmore is a completely different person. The guy who played Eric, he's not as cute as he used to be either, which really sucks. But I loved those shows growing up. And there was one time I remember um, we were, like, super poor. We didn't even have, like, we only had, like, basic cable. So we, we had satellite TV. And there was this channel that we had called The Hub. And it introduced me to a lot of new shows. Like, um... Oh, Three's Company. Uh, what was that other one? I keep wanting to say Thelma and Louise, but that was a movie. Um, Joni Meets Chachi. Uh, Leave it to Beaver. But I got to tell you, my favorite one that would come on was um, Mork and Mindy. You know, uh, well, Robin Williams, like, pretty much first ever acting role. And I loved that show, which, fun fact, it was based in Boulder, Colorado, and I think filmed in Boulder, Colorado, which I thought was cool because as I grew older, when I moved to Colorado, I lived about an hour away from there. And I thought that was really cool. I kind of miss living in Colorado, though. Living in, Col bleh, 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 bleh. living in Colorado was super fun. We would go up to the mountains all the time. and I remember one time. I'm not going to lie to you guys. We were, we were essentially homeless. I mean, my mom and stepdad called it an extended uh, camp camping trip. But I was old enough to know what we were. And there's nothing wrong with it because, you know, things are expensive in Colorado. But anyways, we were essentially homeless, which was fine. It was fine. We had, a, you know, we, we honestly, we had a great time. It was like the best time of our lives. And it was during the summer, so it wasn't too cold. But I remember waking up. Well, actually, I guess it was towards the end of summer. Yeah, it was towards the end of summer because I remember waking up one time and there was a bunch of snow on the ground. It was like two, 
two feet of snow. Massive amounts. And walked outside and there was a herd of elk right outside our tent. It was the craziest thing. Because I'd never, you know, growing up in Texas, I'd never seen elk. I mean, of course, driving through the mountains, you know, we would see it, you know, occasionally off in the distance and everything. But when you're like, say, okay, from me to the sink away from elk, a herd of elk, it's a little crazy. It's scary. It's a new experience because they're massive. They're huge. Let me tell you. So they stayed around pretty much all day. And I ended up going to a friend's house. My brother went to a friend's house. And my stepdad went somewhere. I can't remember exactly where he went. But he went somewhere. And so my mom was there alone. You guys remember Bikini Mom? But she was there by herself. And she was in the tent and she saw the window of the tent move in and then come back. She didn't worry about it much until she saw it again a few seconds later. Move in, go back. And she was like, all right, well, I'll just keep watch of it. And if it does it again, I'll look. Well, a few seconds later, it did it again. So she went to go look and it's, this isn't nice. So she's kind of peering out the, out the little mesh like this. And then all of a sudden an elk comes this close to her face through that mesh. Let me tell you, like I said, this is just hearsay. It's what she told me, which, you know, my mom has no reason to lie to me about things, but I can imagine that would be pretty terrifying. Because like I said, we grew up in Texas. We do not get that close to wild animals. Speaking of getting close to wild animals, I saw this video on Facebook. It was in Colorado, too. This woman uh, got a little too close to this buffalo herd. I mean, granted, there was a bunch of people there, but she was the one stupid enough to get super close. And this mama buffalo had a baby. This mama buffalo grabs this woman with her horn by her pants, swings her around, and tosses her off to the side, pulling her pants completely off of her. They had to tranquilize the poor animal just to get that stupid lady's pants back. It was horrible. I mean, watching her getting thrown around because she was stupid, that was funny. But that is why, people, you do not mess with wild animals. I don't even really agree with zoos. I mean, I don't go to them very often. But, I mean, if they're in a zoo because they're endangered, yeah, that's fine. But if you have them in a zoo just so you know, people can gawk at them and stuff, then, you know, that's where I kind of draw the line. That's why I don't agree with SeaWorld. But I like seeing the wild animals, but you don't mess with them. And it's better to see them in their natural habitat anyways. Okay. Most of our meat is brow brow browned. So what we're going to do is we're going to move it off to the side here. I mean, some of it's still a little pink, but that's okay. It's going to finish cooking. And then we're going to get our trusty, handy dandy, trusty dusty um, grease container. Because I work in the septic business. We go to too many jobs where somebody has poured grease down the line. Bum, ba -dum, bum, 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 bum. I think we can use a ladle. No, probably not. Um, we're gonna use this one. She's she's had a rough life, but we're gonna use her. And we're gonna drain our meat. 
Okay, yeah, we cannot use her. Her life has been way too rough. Um, I might have to grab one. Ha <laughs> ha ha! boom See, I told you, I own way too many utensils, but most of the time it comes in handy. But anyways, we are going to drain our grease. I don't know how much this container is going to hold, considering it's super little. And draining the grease is a little tedious because when you have a lot of meat like this, you're kind of constantly having to move everything back to get excess grease out. And sometimes the meat falls into the grease you're scooping out, and then you have to move it back. But you know what? It's okay. We're going to get through it. We're going to have to get another container. Oh, we will use this. So what we do is... I'll have to find a way to that later. I don't know where it went. Okay, back to draining. Like I said, a little tedious. Kind of takes up some of your time, but it's okay. But, however, it is a good workout for the arm, let me tell you. Now, see, you see what I mean? Move some of this back, let some of that grease come out. So you mainly want to push back the edges of it because the edges is where a lot of the excess grease sits. Because it's going through, you know, it's, it's going through all the meat and it's getting stuck in some places. Now see, we're not going to start on everything else until we put this in the oven. Because when you, it's got to bake, and it's got to bake for like 40 minutes. So while it's baking, we're going to finish with everything else. And don't worry if you can't get all of the grease out. It's okay. It's not going to kill anybody. Just try to get out as much as you can. Okay, so that's going to finish cooking. We're going to move this bowl over here, get our cutting board. We're going to turn that down a little bit so it doesn't burn. Beautiful. It is beautiful. And what I like to do is I like to put, where did they go? I had salt and pepper, but I don't know where they went. Salt. Aha! I have found them. My salt and my pepper. I'll put some pepper in there. Put some salt in there. Beautiful. So I saw this post on Facebook today asking what are weird smells that you like. And I think I just found another one. I love the smell of pepper. Don't know why. I just do. Just figured that out. It smells really good. But another one of my favorites, we're going to move this back. But another one of my favorites is um, gas, which that's not really uncommon, honestly. We're going to use this one. I like this knife. But, you know, I have found out that when chopping onions, you want to leave these things on. Because I've noticed that when you cut these off, that is when your eyes start to burn. So I stopped cutting those off. And we're going to take this big, thick thingy off. Beautiful, beautiful. And then we're just going to chop it. 
chop some more. I'm gonna chop some more. And then we're gonna, well, we're gonna take this off. Where did you come from? All right, we're gonna take that off. And then we're going to chop some more. You know, they had this, they had this container. And you can also plant this and get yourself some more onions. But we're gonna take all of these. Anyway, they had this container at the store I, I was at that had pre-chopped onions, but I like fresh chopped onions. I mean, honestly, I don't like onions at all, but if I'm going to eat them, I would rather not have them in like super big chunks. Excuse you, get away. And we're just going to take this. And we're gonna Chop, 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 chop. I'm probably not even doing this right, but it's okay. I never said I was a chef. I'm dropping onions. And it's okay if you make a mess. It's not good food if you don't make a mess. That's the way I see it. And you know what? Just always have fun with your food. Play with it a little bit. It's fun. Okay. Okay, I think that is chopped up enough. So we're going to take these off. We're going to set her in here. We're going to move our pan back onto the heat. I mean, you don't do it. You don't have to do it exactly like I do it, but this is just how I do it. And we're gonna shoot all that onion into the pan. All right, we're gonna give this a little mix. Make sure you get all that onion in there. All right, like I said, the meat is still cooking, and it will, while the meat is continuing to cook, it'll allow time for the onions to, you know, cook. And we're going to take our nice garlic here. Bum, 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 bum. No, I'm just going to use a regular spoon. I'm not the kind of chef that measures things. So we're going we're gonna to take this itty bitty little, little bitty spoon. Take out a nice little garlic, about that big. I don't know if you can see that, about that big. I'm going to go pop, 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 right in there. We're going to mix that in. I don't know about you guys, but I need a drink. Some water or something. Okay, so. Now it is time to get the tomatoes. My pretty, pretty beef stick tomatoes. Open that. We're only going to use one tomato. There we go. We'll use this one. Cut the end off. Get the rest of the little green thingy out of there. Perfect. And then we're just gonna we're just gonna slice it up. I'm pretty sure I'm not the best teacher, but you know what? It's okay. I don't get paid to teach anyways. I mean, I get paid to make videos, but I don't get paid to teach. Which is probably why I am not a teacher. We'll flip it over like that. 
and then we're going to chop down the middle. This part gets a little bit messy because, you know, tomatoes are squishy and gooey. And then we're going to turn it to the side here. And we're going to chop again. That way we can get those small pieces of tomato. Cut up any more big pieces. And I think we are good. We're going to move this off to the side. And we're going to put in these tomatoes. And plus, it gives it some juice, and it's really good. All right, we're going to give this a little stir. Now, see, this is a lot of meat. So, it's going to need a lot of liquids. And let me tell you, this is honestly one of the best things I've ever made in my entire life. And I'm a super, super, super picky eater. Super picky. So, we're going to move this over here. I'm going to wash this bowl. Put her right here while I get a napkin. This down, get the inside of it all nice and dry. Okay, now we're gonna put that to the sink. We're gonna take this off. Where did my scissors go? I had scissors that went to my knife set. Here they are. I found them. Best pair of scissors I've ever owned in my entire life. Okay. Okay, so we're going to put this and tomatoes in the icebox, and I'll be right back. Okay, while well, this is continuing to cook, we're going to get our liquid mixture ready. Now, you see, usually, I'm going to move this over here a little bit more. Anyways, usually, I, um, I put the Worcestershire sauce in it, but unfortunately the store had none, so I can't put any in there, which is really sad because it makes it super, super good, <coughs> and it gives it like a whole new flavor, but we're going to take that off, give it a quick little shake, and we're just going to pour it. a little bit more. All right, put the lid back on this. And then we're going to put some. Let's see, I got this spice rack from my mom. It's right here. I, I mean, I know you can't see it, but it's got. Is this garlic salt? Yes, that is garlic salt. I kind of have to be careful because it's got like spices in the wrong places. So we're going to put. Like I said, I eyeball things. I don't measure. Put some garlic salt in there. Some seasoning salt in there. Um, some regular salt. Pepper. Ba -ba -da -ba 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 -ba. Get a nice flavor. And let's see here. Um, 
Let's put some onion powder in there, shall we? Um, do, 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 do. Let's see what else we got. Ooh, how about we get a little bit of spice with some chili powder? Not too much because we don't want it to be overly spicy. And <laughs> excuse me. And then we're gonna go with some, ooh, some ground up basil leaves. All right, so we got all of that in there. All right, I'm gonna show you what this what this looks like. I'm gonna try not to spill it. You know, we're we're just gonna do it like this. Ain't it pretty? Beautiful. Okay, so got that, and now we're gonna put the cheese in there. I'm gonna give this a quick little stir so it doesn't burn on the bottom. Okay. And it's okay if uh, when you put it in your pan, if some of the meat isn't brown, because it's gonna go in the oven for like 40 minutes at like 400 degrees, which I should probably preheat right now. I always forget to preheat. And then we're gonna attempt to open this cheese bag. And when in doubt, use scissors. You know, honestly, I really appreciate the four people that are watching right now. Okay. And we're gonna take our cheese we're just going to sprinkle some of that in there. Honestly, we'll probably end up using this entire bag of cheese. Thank you, Timothy. You're so sweet. And then we're going to take a fork. And we're just going to give it a good mix. You know, I read, how many of you have seen The Wizard of Oz. One of my favorite movies growing up. And I found out today, honestly, how horrible Judy Garland was treated on that film set. Okay, we're gonna get a nice big baking pan. And we're gonna set it right here on the stove. Let's turn that back a little bit now. That way we can see what we're doing. And then we are going to take our meat and we're going to pour it carefully into the pan. I've made a mess, but it's okay. We're going to smooth this out. And then the cookbook that I got this recipe from says you're just, you're just supposed to pour the mixture on there. But I don't like doing that. So what we do is we're going to pour it on there. Ba -ba -ba, da -da -da, get every last inch. I can only inch of an ounce, I guess. And then we're going to take our fork again. And we're going to mix it around in here. That way the cheese spreads nice and evenly and it's not clumped up into one spot, you know? Because nobody likes cheese that's clumped up into one spot. And that way all the meat gets flavored. Hey, look, they can smell that. There'd be a green view on there right now. Right, if you could smell this, you would be in heaven. It smells delicious. I'm just going to give it a good, good mix. Because like I said, you want everything. You want this taste in every single bite. 
like I said, I'm super picky. And even I get seconds on this thing. And it's got like a bunch of things that I don't like in it, like the onions, the garlic, the tomatoes. Okay, smush that down. Da, 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 da. All right. It is beautiful right now. I wish I wish you could get a better view, but I don't think you can, unfortunately. Maybe. Right there. Isn't it perfect? All right. Now, we're going to take probably, not entirely sure, probably the rest of this entire bag of cheese, and we're going to put it on top. This is really good for you cheese lovers because it's got cheese on it and in it. Okay, we're going to smooth some of this out. Da, 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 da. Like I said, you want every inch of this thing covered in cheese. Oh, well, thank you, Timothy. No, my cheese. Okay, we're just gonna spread that out. Nice, even coat. And the oven is not yet preheated because, like I said, I always forget. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move this out of the way. Move this out of the way. I'm going to get my little onion holder. Isn't it cute? It holds onions. And this is where we're going to put the rest of our onion. Set that right there in the icebox. And we're going to move this trash out of the way. Okay, we're going to put that back there. And I guess we're going to put that one right there. Like I said, I don't know where any of that goes. Okay, now. Not entirely sure if I want to do the cauliflower first. If I want to do, we'll do the cauliflower first. And we're going to use... We're going to use the little package that I got. So we're going to put this in the ice box. Lord, I need a drink. I'm dying of thirst. Okay, and I have a food processor around here somewhere. Here it is. This and where's my slosser at? I had a slice of that one with it, but I don't know where I went. There it is. From a blade. Okay, so I'm not entirely sure how to do this. I just know that you have to put them in there, put the lid on, food process them up, and then you have to drain all of the moisture out of them. I like play bar. I used to hate it as a kid. Anyways. Put it all in here. And then open that up. Yeah. Plug that in. There's gonna be a little loud. 
I would make this. I didn't have a handy dandy little cheesecloth, but now I got it. Um, I can't let my down my hair. I'm currently cooking right now, and I don't think anybody wants uh, hair in the food. Where did my scissors? Here, my scissors are here. Okay, so what they say you're supposed to do is you're supposed to put it in the cheesecloth to get all the moisture out. This cheesecloth feels kind of, you know, not very durable. So what we're going to do is we're going to fold it up. And excuse you. Kitchen always gets messy when you cook. It's back to life. And plus, I have nowhere near enough counter space. Okay, so we're just going to get a big spoon. And we're just going to kind of scoop it out of here onto the cheesecloth. I guess a little bit at a time, and then we'll put it into another one. We'll, we'll just see how it does. We're going to use an old blue bunny container. Alright, so you take it and you squeeze the moisture out. It's not doing much. Maybe there's just not a lot of moisture in it. Okay, so moisture is out of this one. I'm gonna dump it in here. Uh, we'll probably put a little bit more in this one, but you know. You wanna make sure you get all of the golden flour out. Okay, we got a lot of cauliflower in here. I'm going to take this, and we're just going to give it a nice squeeze. So I say, if this thing busted already, I was going to be mad. Yeah. Squeeze. Oh, something up. Squeeze. And squeeze. And squeeze. Okay, got that one. And it is into the bowl. I'm not entirely sure about how to wash this. I mean, for those of, for those of you who have cheesecloths, do you just throw them away when you're done with them or what? And you, you're going to want this kind of like crumbled, crumbly consistency of it. Delicious. Don't judge me what, about what I do with my food. None of y'all are eating it. Okay, so oven preheated. Oh, that's warm. Okay, and we're going to take this and we're going to put it right in here for 40 minutes. Oh, not that long. 40 minutes. There we go. 40 minutes. Okay, now, while that is doing that, before we get, right before we get to seeing vegetables, we're going to clean up a little bit. Why can I not get that song out of my head? Like, seriously, it won't go away. 
Points to whoever can tell me what the name of that song is. This, that, that right there. Um, I do not think we're going to be able to put that or the big bowl in there. So, but always make sure you wipe out your pots and your pans before you stick them in the dishwasher. Because even living in the city, trees can clog up your lines. And that is not fun for anybody. So we're just going to put this in the sink. Throw that away. We don't clean up a cheese mess. Oh, I forgot these things. I hate doing the dishes because what was that? Did that that landed in the dishwasher? Throw a ketchup packet at me. Stop it. Ha! You missed. He's being mean to me. Now we're going to move this over to here. Good thing I have two cutting boards. I just realized I'm going to need one. Actually, yes I do. Wait. Yes I do. I'm oh, getting so confused. Right here. I'm going to need it. For the cauliflower. Let me get my nice, a nice pot. I like this pot. Ooh, we gotta wipe down the, we gotta wipe down our area. Dang it, that one's empty. Where's my, where's my new one? What? It's okay. Oh, there it is. I can put it in my face. Okay, so we're going to be wiping down our area so that way everything is nice and clean for the next bit. Beautiful, isn't it? Pretty. All right, so what you're going to do is it's got a little, little steaming tray in there. And you're going to want to fill it up to where it's right below the steaming tray. Okay. Right below the tray. We're going to go ahead and turn that on high. Give that a nice little snip. Can you do me a favor, please? Can you give me a bowl? I got a glass bowl, but like a tumbler bowl. That way we have somewhere to put the access cauliflower because we're not using all of it. I'm just going to cut those off. You know what? We're mainly about this. We're just going to rub them off. Get out of my kitchen! Go away! Oh, wow, yeah. <clears throat> Make sure you want to... Yes, thank you. I want to make sure you get all these little leaves off, too, because nobody likes the little leaves. Okay, so... I used my other good knife, so I'm going to use the bigger version of my good knife. You guys are so sweet. All right, we're going to cut off the butt. I'm going to take the knife, 
You know what? We're just going to do it like this. I'm going to take about half of that. And I guess we'll use this half. I know we'll use this half because this half is better. And we're just going to start picking the pieces off. And I, I guess it doesn't really matter how big they are. That's kind of your preference at this point. Hey, hmm. I need a card. Hmm. You know, momento. A bun. I don't know. You don't know what? I have returned. Okay, so like I said, the size of them are really your preference. I mean, I like, I, I like some of them big, some of them small. It doesn't really matter. I even like that. Don't put your shoes right there. Okay. We are getting there. And this part does make a bit of a mess, too, because cauliflower is, like, super, super crumbly. Okay, it is already starting to boil, so... Mmm, so good. So, like I said, I didn't feel like doing a bunch of chopping today, so I just like bought the prepackaged ones, which is okay too. Honestly, it might be a little much, but oh well. I love me some steamy vegetables. Put them down there. And I'm only going to use a little bit of broccoli because I only got like the small one because you can like, you can break those off too. I hate it when he does that. He got new air horns on his truck. And now he does nothing but blow them all day. Alright, then we're going to put the lid on, and we're just going to let them steam. And honestly, that's, I mean, that's about it. I mean, I can't do the mashed cauliflower right now, because by the time everything else gets done, it's going to be cold, so. So, once again, let's clean up our area. It's not going to fit, but it's okay. We'll do something with that later. Okay, so we're going to put this all on here. Oh, I'm losing pieces. All right. This here, just right there. This is the sink. Those. That's this is not the sink. This is the dishwasher. And then I really don't know what to do with that cheesecloth. 
eat your little crumbs if you feel the need to do so. Honestly, cleaning up after crumbs of cauliflower is like the worst thing. Because there's always these teeny tiny little pieces that you can never see. Oh! It is, they're already turning a beautiful, beautiful green. I wish you, I, I really wish you guys were here right now to smell all of this. Okay, so we have our mashed cauliflower here. Our vegetables are steaming. Our food is looking delicious. We're going to hit broil. And it, the light doesn't come on, but it'll start to broil. It's done it before. All right, we're going to put the rest, get off of there. We're going to put the rest of this broccoli in the ice box so it doesn't go bad. All right, so like I said, um, down to about medium. I'll be right back, I promise. Stay. My mama raised me to where you never cook in a dirty kitchen. And he gets so mad that I always have to clean the kitchen before I cook. Mm. Okay, so with the mashed cauliflower, what we're going to do is we're going to add some, a little bit of salt. I'm going to add some pepper. I'm going to add some butter. Brand new tub of butter here. It's so good, it's delicious. I love butter. Makes me sound like I got diabetes. Somebody's gotten into my butter. Right, we're only gonna take on that much. That much will be good. And we're gonna pop this little bad boy in the microwave. Just to melt the butter. So about in about a minute. That way, you know, everything on it can warm up. And I think I'm going to take this and stir these around a teensy bit. Hopefully I don't spill any of it. But it is already getting a beautiful, beautiful color. It really is. Like I said, I wish you guys were here right now to look and smell all of this beautiful, beautiful stuff. Okay, so we're gonna take it off the bake, put it on broil. I think that worked, but I can't tell. Did it work? Yes, it's on broil, but I think we're gonna we're gonna put on a low broil. That way it doesn't get, you know, I guess overbroiled. So apparently I don't know my oven as well as I thought I did. But we got it on a low broil for the next 24 minutes. And ooh, she is bubbling good. Okay. Butter is in there. You might have to use a little bit more butter. I may have underestimated the butter. And we're going to add some cheese. Okay. 
I made another cheese mess. We're going to put some more butter in there. There we go. That should be good. Don't judge me. We're going to put it in for another minute. Okay, so in the oven is a, um, a keto cheeseburger, uh, keto cheeseburger casserole. Then I have steamed vegetables. And then what I just put in the microwave is mashed cauliflower. So instead of mashed potatoes, we have a mashed cauliflower. This is a completely keto recipe. It's called lazy keto. I mean, there's still a little bit of carbs, but not too much. Oh, I cannot wait till it gets back with those drinks. I'm thirsty. <sighs> Another good one is um, chicken and broccoli Alfredo. It's it, it's real. I mean, I personally don't like Alfredo sauce. Like I said, I'm super picky. But um, it smelled good. That's all I can say is it smelled good. Okay. Whoo, loaded that's warm. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna give this a good mix. And what the cheese does in this is it sort of keeps it together, you know? That way it's not completely crumbly. See, it's not overly crumbly. And it smells so good. Give a little taste. She's super hot. Excuse you, stay in the pot. Mm. Oh, it's so good. We'll probably put that back in once everything is done because it's probably going to be cold. Oh, it's delicious. And she is boiling nicely. I'm so happy. I'll be right back. I'm going to go get my oven mitts. Well, my other oven mitts. Get here. Okay. Now see, I've got two black oven mitts, but they're completely different sizes. See? And, okay, so I got this uh, cooking set for Christmas. And I love it, honestly. I, I'm the one that picked it out. But one thing that I did not account for is the fact there is no rubber on the lid. So the lid gets super hot. So you have to have like an oven mitt just to pick it up. But still delicious. Cooks really good food. Ooh. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and put it on high for the rest of the time. I can wait till we get back with the drinks. And we're hopefully it's gonna get a nice golden brown on top. That's you know, that's what you want. Honestly, because well, I can't say that's what you want. You might not like it. It's what I want. It's what I want. I should be able to get what I want every once in a while. But I kind of like the cheese where it's kind of crispy, you know? It's really good that way. That will get me a little bit more of those. Oh, that's hot. I was honestly debating when I was at the store getting all the stuff for dinner tonight. Seriously debating on whether or not I wanted to get um, a lunchable one of those lunchable pizzas just for when I got hungry. Oh, 
Oh, now it's starting to broil. And it is gorgeous. And we're gonna turn this down to a low now. We're gonna check it. We're gonna grab ourselves another fork here. And how you know that they're done is it's, it's just like potatoes. You'll be able to put your fork straight through it. And those are actually done. So like I said, we're just gonna leave that on a simmer for right now until the, um, the stuff gets done, which, oh, it's beautiful. We're gonna push that back a little bit though. That way it's even all around it. Oh, but it's, oh, I'm so excited. So excited. I've been hungry all day. And it's, it's super easy to cook, but I will admit it does take a little bit because I've been cooking for an hour and a half already. Actually, that's a lie. We've, I've been cooking for an hour and 16 minutes. <sighs> Hold on, I'm reading, I'm reading Instagram. One second. Huh. <laughs> Okay. Marshall. All right. So we still got about 16 minutes left. Six, well, 16 minutes and 15 seconds. So in the meantime, I'm going to see if I can find a bowl for this. Um, we're just going to put it in a butter bowl. We'll find a lid for it later. Oh, fun story, by the way. I may or may not have gotten me and my mom banned from the Chinese buffet here in town. Okay, so like I said, it's a buffet. I've seen you jump bigger than Dallas. Nobody likes you, for one. Gimme, gimme, gimme. I'll be right back. No, nobody likes me. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Anyways, we were we were up there, and like I said, of course, it's a buffet. You can get as much as you want. And to go play, you know, to go plates are like seven bucks. And I was like, I'm gonna be hungry later. So I can't open it. Mm, sorry, nobody likes me. I like you. No, you don't. I do. I'll like you if you open it. Long story short, they caught me taking food. When I wasn't supposed to, so it's a funny story. The nastiest oh. place in town. Yeah, we might actually have to wear masks next time we go in there because they don't recognize us. Would you like to come look at this? Okay, I would say that is done. Now, the thing with our oven is, is sometimes when we're cooking is the smoke alarm kind of likes to go off. Oh, it's beautiful. It's crispy and it looks delicious. Well, it's a lot browner on there than it does on here. Okay, so let's see. Ooh. 
We're going to put this in for a little bit longer. Where's that? Smash cauliflower. What? I'm going to put that in for another minute to warm that back up. But it is looking delicious. It's his um, grilling spatula. Okay. I think I'm going to make mine first. Oh, it's got a nice crunch to it. You hear that? You hear that beautiful crunch? All right. And when I first made it, I figured it was going to come out like a, a lasagna, but it does not do that. So don't be discouraged if it comes out kind of soupy. It's okay. We're just going to set that right Actually, if it's a little soupier, it's better. Right? It's delicious. Okay, we're going to take this. Do you even know what it's called? No, what, what what's called? That. Yeah, it's keto cheeseburger casserole. We're gonna pour some of that on there. Ah, I'm so excited. I'm so hungry. Put some vegetables on there. Put some butter on it. And a little bit of pepper. Pork. Now that is a delicious looking dinner. All right, that is it for this episode of Cooking with Bikini Time. I'm going to go set this on the table. I will see you guys in the next video.